ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Perfect Gentleman podcast. My name is Zach Falconer Barfield. I am one of the co-founders of the Perfect Gentleman, and this is episode 73 of the Perfect Gentleman podcast. Now, if you are a regular listener to us, thank you very much for keeping listening. If you're a new listener to us or new watcher of us, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, please, if you're watching us on YouTube, do click the subscribe and the like button. And if you're listening to us on a podcasting platform, do subscribe to us. We are back. We're back with our regular weekly um, podcast. Uh, slight changes, as I said last week. So I'm recording uh, two podcasts, then my co-host James is recording two, and then we're trying to do one together. And over the course of the next uh, few months, we will be having some guest hosts and some guests and some interviews along the way. But this is kind of one of our normal podcasts. It's just me talking to you for about mm, 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how long I can ramble for. So this week, what we're going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is... <sighs> the pandemic. I know, I know, you're going, oh God, um, but the pandemic has happened and we're going to talk about it from a particular perspective. It's our romantic gentleman section. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we do talk about romance here at The Perfect Gentleman. We talk about relationships, we talk about dating, we talk about all kind of things engaging in relationships um, and dating and making yourself a more romantic gentleman because, ladies and gentlemen, as we've always said at The Perfect Gentleman, um, the whole point about being a gentleman is to be both the warrior and the poet. So the warrior and the romancer. So what are we going to talk about with regards to the romantic gentleman and the pandemic? Well, <clears throat> basically, we're talking about how relationships have suffered and what you can do during the pandemic. So relationships have been under strain pretty much during the pandemic, especially in lockdown, especially uh, distance, all kind of things have kicked off. So being in an enclosed space with someone for a great extended period of time with no relief from that person, um, or on the alternative is actually being having enforced distance from that person. In other words, not being able to be close to that person because of the pandemic. So both of those things cause their problems. And relationships are an interesting thing, an interesting dynamic. Um, I remember uh, Bill Murray, the actor, was once quoted as, uh, if you want to know if your relationship is going to survive, uh, go on holiday with someone for a year, traveling the world together. And if you can travel the world together after a year and you haven't had an argument or you haven't you know, broken up, then you know that you're close to that person and you're able to survive. And I think the pandemic has been a little bit like that, that, you know, strong relationships get stronger and weaker relationships show their cracks. So there has been a um, spike in uh, breakups and divorces during the pandemic because of that pressure on people. Sometimes it would be financial, sometimes it would be relationships. But if you're in with someone for an extended period of time, ladies and gentlemen, then, you know, that can cause some friction. Um, I know of a couple of couples uh, who have had, you know, particularly difficult times during the pandemic and um, really basically only survived at the end uh, due to the lockdown restrictions easing. But their fragility of their relationship has become apparent. Now, my own relationship uh, during the last um, year and a half has been uh, actually strengthened by the pandemic. We have had distance for the first uh, massive period of the time. We couldn't see each other because of the lockdown. We weren't together. Um, and then, you know, it's been causing some difficulties in the sense of seeing each other and engaging each other as much as we used to. But I think what we have done is uh, good in our relationship and it strengthened it. So, not just talking generally, we're going to give you some tips and uh, uh, some advice from the romantic gentleman. Um, firstly, if your relationship has had distance, um, make sure that you communicate all the time. Make sure that you speak to each other regularly. Make sure that you communicate on, whether it's WhatsApp, text message, something like that on a regular basis, and also communicate on the phone. And if you like it, FaceTime and visual confirmation, you know, see people. 
we are a visual species. We like seeing people. So remember to see people. So call them, see them, speak to them, uh, engage with them regularly, at least once a day, if not more, especially depending on the strength of your relationship. Second thing is, is do nice things together, even though you're apart. So, um, you know, send flowers, send gifts, um, uh, do special things for that person when you can. The other thing is, so the flip side of that, that's if your relationship is distance. If your relationship is enclosed and you're having difficulties enclosed, firstly is give each other space. You know, we're not used to being in closed spaces with each other for extended periods of time. So give each other space, sort of have designated times where you do things, particular activities that maybe you don't share, go for a run, go for a walk get outside the house, those kind of things. Um, and enjoy each other's company when you are with each other. You know, have a rule, maybe don't have discussions about your relationship <clears throat> lasting at night, just before bed, or never go to bed uh, feeling angry, upset with each other. And also remember to speak about your feelings, because that's equally important doesn't matter what relationship you're in, marriage, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, partner. It doesn't matter what relationship you're in. We all struggle with our relationships and it takes time and effort to work on them. Um, we're going to talk in a future episode about dating after the pandemic and what will and has changed. Um, but that's my romantic gentleman tips for this time talking about romance and dating and relationships throughout the pandemic. So next, what are we going to talk about? Well, I had the great uh, pleasure and the great honor to uh, do something with uh, some friends of ours, and they are called Thomas Clipper. It's thomasclipper.com. I'll put a drop a link in the um, uh, description. Thomas Clipper are a free grooming brand is probably more accurate. They originally started on Kickstarter with some uh, shaving products, uh, so razors, uh, shaving bowls, uh, shaving bags, and now they've moved into fragrance. And I have to say um, that they are fantastic fragrances. Um, and they recently launched their new fragrance, Atlantic, um, recently, which is on top of their other colognes, which are City, Coast, Country, which are the first three, and then Mountain, and now Atlantic, which is a summer scent. What is really interesting about Thomas Clipper is they're two guys, really nice guys, and they're very normal, casual guys who decided to start this grooming brand, aside from their uh, name, you know, their main jobs. Um, and they put a lot of effort and time into creating these products and these fragrances. The really fascinating thing about their fragrances is they build. So you can actually mix and match the fragrances, which is a really unique thing. Um, their new fragrance, which they kickstarted successfully, is Atlantic. You can buy it on their website. Um, and I really like it. It's a really light uh, initial summer fragrance that actually comes punching through with some depth. It has sort of citrus top tones, um, and then it sort of pumps through with some other sort of really interesting fragrances that kind of come through as warmth in the scent. So if you're looking for a new fragrance, it's Father's Day coming up. If you're looking for a gift for someone, I suggest that buying uh, a Thomas Clipper fragrance, uh, um, they have a discovery set, which is a little group of all of them, so you can try them out, would be a really great present. Um, uh, I'm not being sponsored by them, <laughs> nothing to do with us. Thomas Clipper are just friends of ours and we get to have a lovely little sample of them and, and advance notice of them. But you know, they are fantastic brand. They're really lovely guys. Do support them. We're all supporting our um, smaller and independent brands here at The Perfect Gentleman. So that's a little grooming grooming review for, to, for today. Um, lastly, on The Perfect Gentleman podcast today, it's our gentleman news section. I feel like we should put a drum beat in there. Maybe I'll ask uh, to put a drum beat in for The Perfect Gentleman news section. Um, <clears throat> What's my two points of perfect gentleman news? Two things that have caught my eye this week is Pito, Piti Umo. Piti Umo is the, um, I'm going to get told off by uh, our producer for pronouncing it wrong, but Piti Umo 
is the big menswear um, uh, event that goes on twice a year. It's kind of like the equivalent of Paris Fashion Week or London Fashion Week for men, Piti Umo, and it is a, an explosion of, of menswear and lots of people go there to express themselves um, as guests, but also, you know, it is where menswear is um, displayed. Um, and uh, this is the 100th edition of Piti Umo, um, but it's going to be a bit smaller, right? It runs from June 30th to July 2nd. Um, it's been cancelled twice since the outbreak. Um, so I think people are going, but I think it's a, it's just going to be a, a little less. It's supposed to be much smaller. A lot of stuff will be online. Um, and hopefully it will change um, uh, and get better and better and better. And, and we'll look forward to perhaps going there in the future and giving some live reports from uh, PT Umo. So that's number one on the gentleman news. Number two on the gentleman news section uh, today is um, Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, got married. Now, <clears throat> yeah, that's news in itself. He got married to his uh, uh, lady, Carrie Simmons, um, and they got married in uh, Westminster Cathedral Church um, last weekend. Um, and it was a small ceremony, of course, COVID. Um, and then they had a event in um, the gardens of the, of the Prime Minister's residence, number 10 Downing Street. Now, <clears throat> all that aside, the one thing that stood out for me is I know Boris Johnson is not um, the most satorially elegant Prime Minister that we've had, or, or pretty much anyone has had. Um, he always looks slightly crumpled, um, as he always needs shirt stays. Um, he always looks a little bit disheveled. Um, and I know that's uh, uh, his style and his act. But he wore a black suit to his wedding. A black suit. Really, ladies and gentlemen? No, 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 no. Now, I didn't say a black morning suit, a black normal two-button suit. You don't wear black to your wedding, all right? You just don't do it. I mean, Carrie Simmons looked very floral and sort of very sort of hippie 60s, 1960s kind of look dress, very beautifully beautiful with um, flowers in a uh, garland around her hair. And, you know, Boris did look okay, but a black suit... Don't wear a black suit to your wedding, Boris. It's just a style no-no, really, honestly. My grandmother <clears throat> wore a black dress to my parents' wedding. Yeah, I think that was a statement from my grandmother's point of view. And <laughs> I'm not saying anything about you, Boris, but <clears throat> next time, or if you get married again, or another event, black suits, not good for weddings. Anyway, that's enough of the gentleman news uh, this week. Thank you very much for listening to me, uh, Zach Faulkner Barfield. I am the co-founder of The Perfect Gentleman, otherwise known as hashtag 1PG. You can find us on all the social media channels. Uh, this is, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, please do click the like and subscribe button. It really is appreciated by us as we strive to make the world a more respectful, stylish and gentlemanly place. Thank you very much, and we are saying goodbye. Goodbye.